Hey, this is Van. In this second video in our Wireshark series, we are going to talk about columns, profiles, and coloring rules. So to get started here, let's talk about profiles. Because they are important in this video since everything else is stored in profiles. If we go to Edit and Configuration Profiles, and then click OK, what we see here is a list of profiles and yours will probably be set on default for now. We are going to click the plus sign and we're going to add a new profile and just call it My Profile. Then I will hit OK and now we are using the My Profile. Profiles let you customize Wireshark with columns, filters, coloring rules, text size, really just about anything you want to do. Any kind of customization will be contained within a profile. So what we're going to do next here is we're going to add a few columns. There are a couple of them here that I really like to add, although you can add just about as many as you want. The first one that we're going to add, I'm going to click on a packet here and we're going to go to the packet details. The column that we want to add here is time delta from previous displayed frame. Now this is different from the previous captured frame that's right above because it really depends on what is displayed in your packet window. Later on when we use filters, we're going to learn how to display only what we want to display. I'm going to click on time delta from previous displayed frame and I will hit apply as column. As you can see, the column name is kind of long here. So I'm going to edit that column and instead of time delta from previous frame, I'm just going to change that to time delta. I'm going to hit backspace on the text there, hit OK. And I'm going to resize this column and I'm also going to move it over here to where it's right by the time column. The next column that I want to add is source port. Again, I will right click and apply as column. Now I'm just doing this as kind of a shortcut. You can go in and edit the columns without trying to find your column in the packet details, but I'm just trying to make it a little bit easier for you to see how on the fly we can change columns. So again, I'll hit apply as column and you can see the source port. Now, if you notice here, there's one problem with this. When I clicked on a UDP packet, which I intentionally did, the only source ports we see here are for the UDP packets. You can see these two TCP packets here. There's no source port. Again, I will right click, edit column. Source port is fine for the title of the column, but under fields, we're gonna make a little change here. Instead of just saying UDP source port here, we are going to say UDP source port or, which the two, what I call it the pipe sign, you may call it the pipe sign or you may have a different name for it. I'm also gonna put in tcp.src. Really, all I have to do is just start typing that field name and it will autocomplete for me. So now it's UDP source port or TCP source port and I hit okay. And you can see those two packets that we were looking at before with the TCP source port, those just filled in. So again, I'm going to move this over to the left a little bit and put it right after the source address just to kind of organize things here. The next column I want to add is the destination port. So again, I'll find that column here in the packet details. I'll right click and go to apply as column. Once again, I'm going to edit this column. And I'm going to make the same change that I made before, except for the destination port. So I'm going to put OR, again, two of the pipe signs is OR, and TCP dot, again, I'll just start typing DST, and it'll write out the rest of it. I click on that, click OK. And now we have the destination port, and notice our TCP packets are also included in that. So I will move the destination port over here by the destination address. And those are the columns that we want to add. The last thing I want to do with columns here is organize them a little. I'm not a big fan of not having a gap here between the packet number and the time. So I'm going to click on the packet number column and hit align center. Same thing applies here for the time delta and the source. Again, I'm going to align center and get a little bit of space in there between the columns, which for me that helps out just to separate the columns and kind of have a cleaner view and not have everything all smushed together. So we can add more columns, like I said, and we will later, but for now, this is a really good start. 
to get some columns that we need and not have a bunch that we don't need yet. So the next thing we want to do here is to add coloring rules. To do this, I'm going to go to View and Coloring Rules. And again, we're not going to go overboard here. We just want to add a couple. So if you notice, all these are display filters, which we haven't talked about yet, but we will in the next video. So here's the display filter for TCP. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on TCP and then change the background color. So in our case, I just want to make TCP a little bit darker color of blue. I'm going to hit OK. I want to go to UDP and make UDP a little bit more of a greenish color. So I hit OK. If you notice now, we've got a green color packet for our UDP and a blue for our TCP. Now this isn't required, and if the color gets to be too much, you can just go in there and edit and take out that color. The one thing I want to change here though on UDP is the DNS. I want to make the DNS just a slightly different color so that those will stand out too. So I'm going to go back to View and Coloring Rules, and since DNS is not listed, I'm going to add one, so I'm going to hit the plus sign. So I'm going to type DNS there, and you notice that rule does autocomplete, so it is a valid rule. And for the name of it, I'm just going to type DNS. Let's just keep it simple. So now I want to click on a background color for DNS. What I really want is something close to the green for UDP, but just a little bit darker, just so we can differentiate the DNS packets. There we go. So now we can see our DNS packets are a little bit darker green than UDP. And again, what coloring rules are used for is to make things easier to see. So one more coloring rule that I want to add here is for ARP packets. I think those can be really beneficial in troubleshooting. So let's make them stand out just a little bit more. So again, I will go to View and Coloring Rules. ARP is one of them that we already have listed here. So I clicked on ARP. Now I will click on Background. And I just want to make them stand out with kind of a yellow color. So there, now those ARP packets pop out at you. And that's what we want. While we're talking about ARP, just in case you're not familiar with ARP, ARP is Address Resolution Protocol. ARP resolves IP addresses to MAC addresses. So a computer needs to communicate with another IP address, but it doesn't have the MAC address of the computer that it needs to communicate with. So it says, as you can see here, who has 192.168.1.123? Tell 192.168.1.116. So that information column is kind of giving us a summary of what the packet's doing, but let's click on it and see what it really looks like. So as you can see here, I double clicked on a packet and it pops out a window. Sometimes this may make it easier to view a single packet. I'm going to find Address Resolution Protocol Request, so ARP Request, and click on it. And what I see here is the sender MAC address. This is going to be the computer that's making the ARP request. The sender IP address, that dot .116. Target MAC address, it's blank. Target IP address is the dot .123 on our network. So what it's saying is, hey, this is me. I've got this IP address. I need to communicate with this IP address but I don't have a MAC address. So again, if we look at it here in our info column, it says, who has 192.168.1.123, where I need to communicate with, tell 192.168.1.116. So that's an ARP request. ARP requests operate at layer two of the OSI model in the data link layer. So sometimes it can be a problem if you see a computer sending out a bunch of ARP requests. Maybe it's somebody doing a ping scan on the network. Maybe that's good, maybe that's bad. But this is also where you will see duplicate IP addresses. The way that you see duplicate IP addresses here, other than the info column a lot of times will tell you, but the way that you personally can see duplicate IP addresses are when you see two different computers, or in this case, two different MAC addresses answering an ARP request for this same IP address. Let me give you a little sneak peek at the next video, which is gonna be filtering. Again, we're still talking about ARP here, so I'm going to type ARP and hit enter. You notice everything is yellow because we just filtered on ARP requests. So that's our start of filtering. The last thing I want to look at here with you is something that we've seen before when we've inspected packets. But again, let's double click on one packet and then double click and let that fill up the entire screen. Click on Ethernet 2 here. 
we've got our destination address, we've got our source address, we've got our type, which is IPv4. And then we've got our IPv4 section of the packet. And again, I'll click on it here, and you notice that at the bottom, that's the IPv4 header of the packet. And in that we have source address, destination address, protocol type UDP, which is number 17. If that were TCP, it would be a number six. Next we have UDP, which is gonna give us a source port, a destination port, and a length. And this right here is a DNS packet. And as we can see, it lists the DNS information. And in this case, it's a DNS query, and it actually shows you the packet number of the DNS response. So if we wanted to see that DNS response, it's in 3074. So let's close this. As you'll also notice, you can see this right here, these little arrows and the dashed lines. And that's another way that you can see packets that are linked together, like a DNS query and a DNS response. Well, that is really all for this video. We have learned how to make columns, how to organize those columns, how to add coloring rules to packets based on a filter criteria, and we dug in a little bit deeper into the packet details. The next video will be about display filters. Display filters will start to bring down the number of packets in our packet list. Right now at 4,600 packets, if we wanted to find something in particular, it's not gonna be a fun task. It will be pretty difficult, kind of like finding a needle in a haystack. Next time around, let's make the haystack smaller so we can find the needle a lot easier. Thanks for joining me on this video, and I will see you on the next one. Packet filtering.